And it, again, ties back to other things we've talked about. They want to create citizens, as it were, that reflect what they are culturally at their institution. And there's a great deal of continuity in what they're all trying to produce. They're trying to produce a well-rounded, thoughtful, educated, reflective worker to, you know, hopefully find a, a job within their degree field. And it's a very serious, when we have kind of the cerebral discussions with leaders at these institutions, this is a big deal. Welcome back to the Magellan Podcast, navigating education in the 21st century. Here, the Magellan Learning Solutions partners, Wayne Patton, Aaron Traphagen, and Emily Hetty, talk about the biggest questions and issues in higher education. Today's episode is Higher Education as an Institution, part four of a five-part leadership series on how to talk about higher education. Welcome back to the Magellan Podcast. My name is Aaron Trapagan, and I'm here with uh, my partners, Drs. Wayne Patton and Emily Hetty. Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon, Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Wayne. Uh, this week, uh, we are hitting our fourth uh, part of a five-part series uh, on higher education uh, metaphors related to leadership. Uh, this week, we're planning to talk about higher ed as an institution. Uh, but before we jump in, and as we've done each week, uh, I'd love to ask uh, Emily to go ahead and, and talk to us about how we got here and why we're talking about these things. Sure. So um, as we've been working with our own team here at Magellan, we've We've um, tried to help them understand that whenever they go into a client institution, they're going to need to get a read on the campus culture, on what it's like, on the context. Um, so we've covered three of the sorts of things we typically introduce our teams to, um, campuses that run like ecosystems, that have strong cultures, and that run like a machine. Um, this week, we're, we're going to talk about higher ed as an institution, um, which tends to be a sort of dominant way that campuses that uh, – have a sort of long, proud history, um, or that maybe have a prominent role of one sort or another, um, tend to describe themselves or think of themselves. So, um, for example, we worked with a you know, very, very large community college um, in the past that, that plays a really pivotal role in, in their state economy. Um, it happens to be the fact that Wayne Patton might have gone there. So obviously training future leaders um, in the world and so on. But uh, but their history as an institution, the role they play in the state's really, really important to their identity. So um, when we're working with, with our own teams um, and helping them understand how they can work most effectively with client institutions, these are the things we, we train them to look out for um, and to, to be cognizant about as they, as they work with leaders on those campuses. Okay. And as we, uh, as we jump into this discussion, I guess we'll just start by just talking about you know, what we are talking about uh, when we talk about higher ed as an institution and, and what the implications are for higher ed. So it's possible we made jokes about referring to higher ed as an institution, and that's that's not what we mean. What we mean is an institution in the sense of um, a kind of officially functioning arm of social value. So something like the government, churches, community organizations, and the education system are all institutions. And these are the places that we collectively as a society um, rely on to teach us um, things like rules for how to live productively, um, what's basically right and wrong, what's acceptable and not acceptable. They're sort of citizen retraining programs. Um, and as a rule, the more powerful the higher ed institution is, the larger role it plays in this. So just to take a real quick example, you know, if I say um, I'm doing research on virus transmission and a study that came out of Johns Hopkins University Medical Center and that was conducted in um, partnership with MIT said right away, I'm like, oh, this is a serious and a good and a real study um, versus, you know, the study that came out of my neighbor's basement. You know, my neighbor's basement is not an institution that commands respect. Um, at least I don't think it is. So that's that's just that example. Yeah. And we think about um, I mean, this actually, you know, very seldom, very serious. But I, I think the schools that we work with and the ones that we have peers in and our work within higher education, I think people – um, uh, leaders take this very seriously. I think they get that this is part of their role within society. Uh, we work with state schools, with HBCUs, with faith-based schools of all sizes, and they all there's a great deal of continuity, I think, with how seriously they take their mission in this regard. And it, again, ties back to other things we've talked about. They want to create citizens, as it were, that 
reflect what they are culturally at their institution. And there's a great deal of continuity in what they're all trying to produce. They're trying to produce a well-rounded, thoughtful, educated, reflective worker to, you know, hopefully find a a job within their degree field. And it's a very serious, when we have kind of the cerebral discussions with leaders at these institutions, this is a big deal. I mean, they take it, there's a great deal of continuity, like I said, with how how serious and how important the leaders see this role. So as we we look at varying institutions, you know, what what would you say would be a good way uh, to establish what they think those values are? I mean, if we, we went to every school and said, here, let's look at your core competencies. You know, is that the the best indicator maybe about how they see their role as an institution? It's a good indicator. Um, it's I spend a fair amount of nerdy time kind of looking at institutional mission statements, core values, core competencies, institutional priorities, strategic plans, you know, all of those kind of guiding documents. And um, one thing I will say, I mean, everybody's got a lofty mission, like Wayne said. Very few of those missions are specific enough to really guide those other documents. So I think that's that's really where the rub is, and that's where you want to spend time both internally as a leader on your campus and maybe as you talk to other leaders on other campuses. Um, what does that mission actually mean? Um, and that's that's a really, really tough question. Um, oftentimes, too, you'll, you'll kind of get on a campus. I, we were working with a campus um, a couple of years ago that was having some assessment problems. And um, the reason they were having assessment problems was that their mission was out of sync with their vision statement, mm. which was out of sync with their core values, which was out of sync with their strategic plan. They couldn't align those things. Mm. Um, they were – all of this came to a crisis because they were having a lot of money trouble and they were trying to figure out how do we get some money infused – their mission was not a lofty money-making kind of mission. So they had to stop and do some really, really hard work. And it was it was enjoyable to be part of those conversations, um, kind of watching people's lives change, you know, as they really thought about what, what are we doing here? You know, I've yeah. been at this campus for 30 years, and I thought I was training missionaries. But that doesn't yeah. make money. What so do we do? <laughs> is that a pretty, pretty common problem? Do we find like so, you know, people maybe they start that institution, you know, and 1829 or yes. whatever, um, and they had this wonderful mission, but then the the school or the organization evolves sort of separate from that that mission. Yes, yeah, it's very common, and it's um it's really hard to get to a level where you're looking hard at your mission or at your core values and mm-hmm. actually making changes mm-hmm. or reinterpreting those. It's um it's not the sort of process that can happen quickly. It takes tremendous, tremendous buy-in on the campus to get something like that to a meaningful level. And it takes a ton of time and nobody has time right now. So mm-hmm. um, this is one of those things though, that I think if, if I were, you know, coming into a campus and advising a new president, I'd say, have a leadership retreat for two weeks and do this, you know, and then authorize your people to have another leadership retreat for a week at different levels and do it. So if a lot of these institutions, you know, are have some age on them, yeah, right? And they do. came up with these missions and what their role, you know, for society was going to be. So considering it's so much possibility for them to get out of sync with their own, uh, where does that put them in relation to other social institutions like government and church and, you know, the, the populace as a whole? Well, one thing that um, I think we've all been watching – sort of lately unfold in the media is, is government pressure on higher ed has been increasing. And um, if you, if you read any number of higher ed institutional missions, very few of them say something like um, job training and vocational fields or some sort of very specific thing like that. Community colleges probably say that trades institutes certainly do. Um, But your average four year regional public, something probably about training citizens in a, in a broad sense. Right. Um, Yet, all of the legislative pressure seems to be toward creating degrees and producing low debt graduates in fields that pay a fair amount of money, mm-hmm. which is to say the trades, All um, the gainful employment stuff, the gainful employment stuff. Right. So you've, you've kind of got a bit of a conflict of institutions mm-hmm. happening. And um, I'm not a fan of legislators making very draconian rules about how higher ed needs to do things. Um, largely because most of the time, the level of understanding among legislators of how higher ed works is fairly low. I also am not a fan of institutions of higher ed having no accountability to the states where they, they work. Mm-hmm. Um, so once again, it's, it's a long process that probably needs to happen not by one imposing a rule on the other, but maybe by everybody getting in the same room and talking. You know, an interesting conversation with the client yesterday talked about uh, the, the role of business, the role of government, the role of the family, the role of education. And, and it was a, 
little sidebar conversation about how those are pretty specific lanes and everybody wants to drive in everyone else's lane. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, a key part of it is you know, the cliche, know your lane and what are we seeking to do? And then it turned to a conversation that maybe each of those kind of pillars of society have a, a role in. And that is something that's also in our mission statement. This client brought it up. But it, in the really broad sense, it's it's about human flourishing. You know, we've talked about that. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's almost everything you just talked about. All those all those things the institution is seeking to do in terms of training students and uh, you know creating a workforce, and it really it's part of that human flourishing story. So, at Magellan Learning Solutions, our mission is to help our clients' educational missions with tailored curricular and operational solutions to help them thrive. To meet the accompanying challenges, the experts at Magellan Learning Solutions offer a full spectrum of services in the areas of curriculum development, operational administration, training and professional development, enrollment and marketing, or custom solutions to niche projects. Whether managing turnkey projects, consulting, or acting as a force multiplier, our experience and relational approach will help your team attain its goals. For all your educational needs, Think Magellan. Visit us at thinkmagellan.com today and set up an introductory meeting. Yeah, and I guess it, it's a pretty complicated question, yeah. right? So here, uh, you know, I come in and I, I'm, I'm part of the leadership of this entity. Uh, what we're doing day to day may be misaligned from our own you know, role that we're assigned. And then I know I definitely don't maybe fit in with what my state government thinks uh, my role is, probably don't fit in with what some of the citizens think or what some of the churches think or, you know, so w what do I do? You know, if I, if if we're walking in, if you're a leader at one of these institutions, what, what do you, what do you do? It's a great question. Um, I think, first of all, I might say, Wayne, Wayne, you said it really well, know what your lane is. And um, in many cases, um, you know, not fitting is okay. Um, you know, when I go to my when I go to my doctor, you know, she has a number of things she talks to me about health related. You know, you need to not eat this. You need to. It's mostly about not eating things I like. <laughs> um, that's generally how the conversations go. Not drinking all the caffeine that I want. Um, so on, and that's that's her role. Um, and she's right to do that. Um, but. You know, when I when I talk with my family, which is another institution at Thanksgiving, their role is not to tell me not to eat the things that I like. Their role is to sit around the table and build our family unit over food and coffee because that's mm -hmm. what we do. Um, so not fitting is OK. And I think we need to understand there's some there's some good in the conflict, um, which is it's hard. Right. It's a little it's a little bit challenging. And I think it's good for the state legislature to push for workforce and it's good for higher ed to push for well-trained, liberal arts-enabled citizens who can think and who can maybe imagine something beyond workforce. Mm -hmm. We need both. Yeah, and what I'm hearing in that, to kind of Aaron's question, is is it's a complex stewardship issue for for university leaders. Yeah. Not being a jerk would be a, a good first thing to do, though, right? You know, not picking every fight, but reaching across the aisle and trying to figure out how to make the conflict productive rather than rancorous. We could use a lot more of that. <laughs> so when we talked earlier about when we talked about ecosystem uh, in the first uh, episode of this, we talked about kind of the difference in scale, right? And so this is another one that kind of has one of those scale questions. There's the institutional question. And again, as a leader, probably a little easier maybe if you're you know, in a small school in a state, the context of what you have to deal with is different. But, you know, what about higher ed at a large. I mean, we're seeing massive conflict between, you know, the public, you know, talking about the value of higher education. What does it do? You've got you know, very wealthy people and government officials saying it, it it's, it's a waste of time, a waste of money. You know, clearly we have a ton of advocates for higher education as well. When you get to that large place, I mean, so what, what can be done there? I mean, because we still have all this leadership, you know, in that space, you know, is, is there a, is there a large Congress of higher education <laughs> that, uh, that needs to be called together to talk about where we go from here? Well, that'd be great. If I knew how to fix that error and I, I doubt I'd be working. Working um, with me? Yeah, sorry. No. But, <laughs> no, it's, it's a great question. And, um, I think we are, in some ways we've inherited problems that came of, um, maybe some poor decisions about how we treated higher ed over the last 
half century or so, or maybe a little bit longer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a liberal arts graduate. I'm very grateful for my liberal arts training. I also think Ohio State probably didn't need to graduate um, 150 English majors the year I graduated. I don't, I don't know what we all ended up doing. Um, that was great training for me. I use it every day. With us. With, with you all. <laughs> Somebody has to write the stuff, right? Um, no comment. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's great, but I mean, we do we need to think about these kind of responsible decisions. But I know when I graduated from high school, the question was, where are you going to college? Mm. The question wasn't, are you going to college? And there was not a whole lot of honor placed on doing anything else. Um, so I think there needs to be balance in that. Mm. I mean, we need we need all these things. So if higher ed as a pathway were suited more to the people that that are really suited to it, um, I think that that might be a great first step. And maybe we can start with some of those conversations. And I don't think every four-year higher ed institution needs to try to get into workforce. Mm -hmm. Um, There may need to be some some shrinkage that happens um, over the course of the next number of years as those lanes get more differentiated. Yeah, and maybe maybe we'll see more of these – you know, professional technical schools focused more on – you know, maybe we'll see folks in the computer industry shifting from universities – and and going to, you know, some of these more technical schools, you know, where that is. But, yeah, uh, it's an interesting question, uh, one clearly we won't solve in, in 15 to 20 minutes of time, but uh, definitely a conversation we could keep having, and hopefully you all will as well. Uh, we thank you for joining us for, for this conversation about higher ed as an institution, uh, and we look forward to having you join us for our next episode on higher ed as a marketplace. Thank you for listening to our conversation on higher education as an institution. If you enjoyed our talk today, or if it helped you in your educational journey, take a moment and leave a review to let us know what you think. Look for our other episodes in the series. If you or your school is looking for help with enrollment and marketing, curriculum services, academic operations services, training and professional development, or you need help with a custom solution, think Magellan. Our team would love to help. Find us at thinkmagellan.com and contact us to set up an introductory meeting. Thank you for joining us on the Magellan Podcast, Navigating Education in the 21st Century.